Hi, this is Valle, and I'm gonna show you today how to make a turntable for your 3D model in Unreal Engine using Metashoot. So we have here an empty scene. This is just a normal project uh, that I have loaded for Unreal Engine. This is the default map. And the first thing we need to do is to create a new level. So I'm going to go to the content browser, add level. I'm going to name it use zero, open it and save it. And in this one, I'm going to uh, create a new studio from Metashoot. So come into Metashoot's interface. Uh, you can either drag it from the assets studio or you can straight come to a studio tab and select one of the presets. So I'm going to select this first one. And this is a, a good um, good place to begin with. It has all the assets available already uh, set up for it. The camera, the target, uh, the lights and all that. And the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the sample here because we are not going to need it for this one. And I'm going to be using for this showcase uh, a 3D model by Pablo Muñoz Gómez, also known as Pablander. Uh, he's an amazing ZBrush sculptor and he has uh, allowed me to use this 3D model of his uh, for the um, for the showcase. So I'm going to come here to my folder and in this case I have it prepared as an actor. Um, so I just drag it from the content browser to the to the scene and here um, I'm just going to place it in the center of the studio. So the studio by default comes aligned to the, the zero coordinate and with this in place, um, I'm going to come to my camera here, my DSLR camera from Metashoot. And the first thing I'm going to do is to pin it down here, pin preview. Um, this makes the preview to stick here. So all the changes I do, I can see the, the final result here. So pin it down. And now I can start playing a bit with the composition and the lighting. So the first thing I need to do is to move the camera backwards just so we show the full model here. Um, something like this, maybe even a bit further. So coming here, uh, just so it doesn't show the other light. Perfect. And one thing to note is that the target that comes by default with the studio, um, so the target, if you move it, all the camera and the lights follow it. Um, by yeah, automatically. So uh, the camera not only follows it, but it also sets the focus point on it. So if you have depth of field, um, the focus point will be where the target is. So in this case, because I want to focus more on the on the face of the Viking rather than the, the shoulders or the body, I'm going to move it just a bit forward. So it's aligned with the face here um, that will make the, the turntable focus on, on that point. And now that we have the composition in place, uh, I'm going to start playing with the lights to, to see what the um, our final turntable will look like. So coming back to the Studio tab here, um, you can just click or drag some of the presets to the scene and show in real time how they how they look like both in the editor and in the final in the final image. Um, for this one, I'm going to start with this yellow uh, preset just because it has quite a nice lighting um, and pretty simple at the same time. It only has these two soft boxes on the sides, um, uh, a big light bank in the background to, as you can see here, to give a bit of um, a bright background and the top light here. And for this render, I'm going to go with a neutral background. So I'm going to select the cyclorama, go to center color here, and just lower the saturation down. And also I'm gonna darken it up just a bit. So it's a, something like a gray, yeah, that works well. Um, I think the camera is still a bit close to the model, so I'm just gonna move it backwards a bit more. And now that the, maybe not as much, there we go. And now that we have it in place, um, I'm going to change a bit the lighting so you can edit all the lights and everything that appears in the scene already. So as you can see, um, it shows the results in, in real time. Um, 
you can also select the target again. Um, so it tracks the the light tracks the the target. And for this one, I want something like this. I'm gonna change the soft light to a thirty by uh, hundred and twenty, just because I like this long shape for this for this light. And for this one, I quite like how it looks already. Um, the only thing that I that I feel like, well, I'm gonna um, brighten up the the top light, so slide in the intensity up to something like this, just so it has a bit more detail up top. And I feel like the face is slightly dark, um, so I'm gonna brighten it up just a tiny bit. Come into our assets tab uh, in the MetaShoot interface, and I'm gonna drag just a 60 by 60 softbox. I'm gonna put it here close to the model, um, just out of frame. And of course, this is too bright at the moment, so I'm just gonna lower it down enough to have a tiny bit of light and a tiny bit of reflection, but not too much. And with this one, I think I'm gonna increase it a bit more as well, just so we have that nice reflection coming from the right, and even moving it to the yeah the, to the left a bit. So I think this composition works pretty well. And for the turntable to work, the first thing we need to do is grab in the outliner our model, in this case the the Viking actor. And we're gonna drag it inside the turntable here, inside the MetaShoot turntable. Uh, just by doing this, if we click play or simulate, the turntable already works. Um, if you don't see it in the preview, it's because the camera is pinned down. But if I unpin it and select the camera, I can simulate and see the final result here. So I think that works pretty well to, to showcase this model. Um, I'm gonna pin it down again. And just a reminder, if I'm gonna grab just a mesh from this Viking here, so this is a static mesh instead of a instead of an actor. If you want to include a static mesh inside the turntable, um, just by when you spawn a static mesh, it won't let you do it. It will be grayed out, and this is because the mobility is set to a static. So you need to move it to uh, you need to change it to movable first. Once this is movable, you can drag it and put it inside the turntable. If I click simulate, everything will rotate now. So everything that's inside as a, as a child of the turntable will rotate with it, including lights or anything else that you that you want to put inside. So I'm gonna get rid of this mesh that was just to, to show the how a mesh works in this, in this setup. And if we select the turntable here on the ground, we see that we have a few options, uh, the full rotation, 360 degrees in this case, um, just the ability to enable it or, or disable it. And the full duration, I'm gonna go with uh, six seconds for this one and no delay looping clockwise. Yeah, all this works fine. Um, and just because I want to have more, um, more detail for this turntable, I'm gonna get a second shot. So if I duplicate my camera and I come, so holding Alt, and just moving the camera, it will create a copy of it, and you can move it wherever you want in the scene. And what I'm gonna do with this is showcase the uh, how MetaShoot um, just queues up all the cameras that you have in the scene uh, automatically without any any render queue or anything. Um, so I have my two cameras here. I can select both or directly select the studio actor, which has both uh, cameras inside. And having set up all the turntable, the lighting, the model, uh, the, on the only thing left to set up is the render settings. So coming back to our MetaShoot interface, we have the settings tab here. And these are some uh, settings that I was playing before, uh, playing with before, but I'm just gonna reset everything for now. And I'm gonna explain quickly uh, what I'm gonna be changing. So this is how the um, yeah, this is how the, uh, MetaShoot comes by default. And in this case, duration. If you only want one frame, uh, like a single shot, you can leave it with one. In this case, because we want the full turntable, uh, we can click the uh, we can select first 
uh, yeah, selecting the studio works as well. Uh, selecting the studio, we can click get from turntable. And what this does is uh, calculates already. We said that it was a six second turntable at 30 frames per second here. Uh, so that's 180 frames. Uh, the render title is going to be Viking. This will affect the um, the final uh, the output name for the for the render and uh, output path. I'm just going to select. I'm going to go to desktop. I'm going to create a new folder called Viking, and that's where uh, my my renders will go. Resolution uh, 1080p. Um, that sounds good to me. And lock ratio. Yeah. For the quality, I'm going to go with ultra high. Um, I'm actually going to go with high just for this one. And I'm going to be using the base renderer, but not the path tracer, because this model in particular has a bit of uh, subsurface scattering, and the path tracer doesn't necessarily work uh, work really well with it. So I kind of like how it looks used with the base renderer. I think this is a really good model to, to showcase in that way. And for the output format, um, I'm going to go with just PNG. A PNG sequence that I will um, edit later in, in After Effects to stitch it into a video. But you can also export it as a MOV uh, format, which is already a video. Uh, the only thing to note is that if you um, apply this, this format, you need to first come to Edit, Plugins, uh, search for Apple ProRes, and enable this plugin. Apple ProRes Media. Otherwise, you won't be able to to export in MOV. Uh, but in this case, I'm just gonna leave it in PNG. Also, sorry, uh, another thing is that uh, MOV only works with Windows. Apple doesn't, even though it's a, an Apple plugin, uh, Mac doesn't allow for it. So uh, if you're in Windows, you have to come here to the plugin and enable it, and it will export a video. Um, for this one, I'm gonna leave the motion blur and the denoiser on. Because um, I think that will be a that will give a, a nice result, and once uh, all this is in place, uh, I don't need any render passes, and um, so I can just again select the studio and click render, and this is gonna start rendering our whole scene. I'm gonna cut here and hopefully pass straight into the final sequence and show you guys how everything looks. So thanks so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, please pop them in the comments or join our Discord server and you can ask anything there and also showcase your work. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.